So I put up a video a couple hours ago on the importance of writing efficient scripts. And I showed off this script, which is something I had written to auto-generate shortcuts. And one of the predictions I made that immediately once I put it up, a lot of people are gonna tell me ways to improve it. Um, now, of course, in the last video, I talked about big improvements that, I, that made it extremely fast, uh, and much more efficient than it used to be when I was looping through this list and outputting to file after file after file. Um, but there are some other optimizations that a lot of people mentioned, and I just wanted to sort of talk about them just to, I guess, have them in your brain. Um, now, first off, I had these directory shortcut, um, uh, the, well, the directory shortcut and the dot .file shortcut commands, which are sort of syntactically similar. And a lot of people noted that I was using both sed and awk and you can actually get away with only using one of them. Um, now, there are a couple of people who recommended uh, only using awk here. So I have implemented, I have another copy of the script where instead of uh, taking, running sed on the folders uh, file and to get rid of all the commented lines, um, instead we can go over here and you see that we actually can do just one single awk command. We still have the print command here, um, but we also have this thing here, which is really just a regular expression that says, don't print any of these lines that begin with a uh, pound sign. Um, that's all this says. So this is actually a slightly faster way of doing the same thing. Again, it's, it's marginally faster, uh, imperceptibly faster, but of course that kind of stuff adds up and it's important to write things up. Uh, that are just a little bit quicker, but that's not the only optimization. But let's go ahead and look at this. So if I um, run uh, time on this, this is the original script. We're getting around 50. Let's see, there are other ones that are more like mid 50s up as uh, 60 milliseconds or something like that. If we want to run it on this, um, we usually get low 50s. Oh, there's some 40s uh, and stuff like that. So it's a little bit faster, tends to be. So, you know, just uh, let that known. Now, one of the other things that I, I had talk to some people in the comments about um, is notice that what we're doing here in these awk commands, for each one of these awk commands, we're actually, um, I mean, they're all working on the same folder. So this one runs an awk command on folder. This one runs an awk command in folder. Um, so it's accessing the folders file three times. And I think I, I might've said this, something like this in the last video. There's probably a way to, to be able to just access it once and then have different commands. And there is a core, uh, I was talking to someone in the comments section. Yeah, there is a, a core utility called T, which does this for you. And while I was trying to figure it out, uh, actually someone up here, uh, this guy, Andre, actually gave, um, I, I'm not familiar with T, but we can go over it, but he gave a simple solution. So just to show you how T works, because it's not, it's one of those utilities that people don't use as much. So let's make um, uh, some kind of directory here and go into it. Uh, so let's say we'll create a file. So here's some content and we'll put this into, you know, uh, input file. Um, so now we have you know, this input file that has this stuff in it, okay? Um, so what uh, T does basically is you can, let's say we can cat input file into T, and let's say we wanna put that input into you know, new file or something like that. And what it does is it puts that input into new file and it also prints it to standard output. So the w reason this thing is called T is because it's one of the command, it's a command that basically forks the stream. It puts part of the stream in a file and it prints part of the stream out. And in fact, you can, well actually let's just verify that that did go into that file. It did indeed. Um, you can also do something like, let's say cat input file. You can choose multiple files here. So I can say file one, file uh, two, file three. Um, and it's still gonna print the standard output, but it's also created all of these files and all of them will have that same output in it. Um, so that's basically how T works. Now the thing about it is I can show you another revision of the script. And in this one, we only access the folders, like the, the actual input file once. Um, in this one, I do, did it a little different. I actually have it access it with a sed command. Um, and the reason I have that, um, you know, the script before we integrated the set, the getting rid of the uh, comments into the awk command, but it actually works better to do it in sed here because you call the file and automatically get rid of the, uh, the commented lines or whatever. And then what happens is we use T and instead of putting the output into a file, um, we use, uh, what, what's it called, a, a process, um, 
oh god there's a name for it someone's gonna tell this thing right here so you're so normally supposed to output to a file uh, but you're outputting to a process um it's probably just called process output or something uh, process substitution i think that's what it is okay i just know them by what they look like so when you have um when you have something in parentheses and uh you know a, a, a bracket going towards it that just means it's a pro uh, process substitution and this is i think only part of bash just so you know i don't think it's in uh, your standard like shell or your POSIX compliant shell. But anyway, so what this is doing is instead of accessing the folders file three times um, for the three things we print out, uh, basically what it does is it takes T and then it outputs uh, this uh, process substitution. Um, so it takes that output and it runs the awk command we need and then it puts it in the the actually file the actual file we need um, same thing so we have the three files two of them are process substitution and then the other one um, we just have you know the uh, plain output going where, where did it go okay yeah right right here um, so we just the last one we just take that output and pipe it to a normal awk command and that's the reason we do this and instead of a process substitution is because t no matter what is going to print stuff on um it's going to print stuff on to your actual shell and standard output so that's why you want to if you don't want it to do that you can just you know pipe it into something else so let's say uh, uh, well it doesn't even matter you get the point though so we can do something like that um so anyway, that that's about it. So I just wanted to do this just to give the uh, the people credit who you know came up uh, with the different solutions. So as I said, you know people always give you feedback if you put them out there. But uh, oh yeah, we, let's run. Let's see how quick this one is. So newest shortcut. So we got low low forties, got thirty milliseconds. So this one is considerably faster than the other two because it's really doing it in the most efficient way. It's only accessing the files once. So anyway, this is just a small addendum. So I'll see you guys next time.